And uh, for our material, uh, today we're going to talk about resource efficient and efficient model. And uh, this is Mark from Amazon Lexus Speech. So I will take charge of the section one, which give you is for speech processing and uh, I will show all the material okay let's start it So, okay. today, to make this. Yeah. Okay. From Meta AI. So there's a popular paper and it just really is outlined how to plot things. So we're happy to invite him first to give him in his following talk. So showing us for a general QA and hope this following talk can make you more psychic about today's tutorial. So first, I'm gonna go overview from parameter vision learning to marketing mobile application. So I can talk about theory and just kind of presentation about the basic term and how it's not fancy actually. So in this tutorial, in the person the board using um uh, can you use parameter a little bit turn up a feature or turn up a parameter to modify the function which are not. So they can be adapted. No rank adaptation. And we're going to also cover the how to do So it's good to know. And also, save your GP memory. That's something we currently we are very concerned when we have a large language model and want to fine tune it. So, uh, according to a survey, uh, most of the audience are interested on in, uh, how can you use large language models for. Uh, Parameter efficient learning, how to use parameter efficient learning with large language model, and also code model and multi model technique is more uh, uh, more than the features. And then uh, most of the audience uh, is half half. It's like some of them, I would say, sixty percent of them have uh, have of you have read or published the paper on parameter efficient learning before, 
and around 40% of the audience are just new to this area. So in my uh, tutorial, so I'm gonna give an overview about how these techniques, but most of all, I get a lot of comments saying, how is the surgical foundation about pumping or neural model reprogramming, which is currently missing here. So when I introduce this basic technique, I will go to give some connection about how they connect to the old technique about universal approximation, which can over brand new, new research area. So again, a lot of you are really want to have this uh, examples could benefit about mm -hmm. adaptation uh, adapt, adaptation set out of large creature models, so we're gonna have it. All right, so this uh, uh, tutorial I gave, the first tutorial I gave, uh, how to, make another use of reverse array noise for refunction uh, approach model for good use case. So we made it in ICAS 2022, which was also the one of the most popular section. And this year, uh, we further in ICAS 2023, uh, we further uh, talk about how additional loss can help for parameter efficient learning. And we also review uh, a new not just to using this frozen adaptation technique, we also review a new architecture for the neural space based machine. And also, we talk about something on contest learning. But in this tutorial, uh, some of the material are not covered and some material are covered. But mostly, we're going to talk about uh, memory efficient learning and multi model with merging, which is something not covered in the previous tutorial. So I gave a, a line. I don't usually make entire new slide for my each of my tutorial, which is good for audience, a bad for speaker. So uh, for my part, we're gonna first talk about the basic definition and literature of parameter vision learning. And we're gonna mainly talk about standard parameter vision module. And there's some work we'll be presenting in this video. I'm not really good to detail. We'll find the presentation and then and, and poster and sound authors actually in this session. So feel free to uh, talk with the author. And the second path will be open problems and opportunity in parameter efficient learning. So we're gonna uh, talk about generalization stability and how uh, data and models going low can work for parameter efficient learning. And they also so uh, one of my co-author working the interspeech. Uh, also I'll skip it because most of them are covering the previous tutorial. And today, one thing I'm gonna talk about is like how the lowering adaptation work, because um, which is also called cool, Laura. Laura is some popular term recently, but in this tutorial, I'll specifically go into the detail and how they can further apply uh, in one, one B model, because when the model uh, parameter go over 100 billions, uh, LoRa become one of the most popular architecture. We're going to talk about this limitation new opportunities. And finally, we're going to talk new terms, which actually uh, proposed by Google earlier this year about modular deep learning to design how this parameter vision learning can, uh, in future become really modular and apply to the, uh, to the uh, general deep learning framework. So something we're not cover is like specific work on um, multilingual and cross uh, model learning. And some then like are gonna present the interspace piece here. And for the neuron uh, uh, space based machine, I'm gonna skip it entirely. Cool. So what is parameter efficient learning? So first of all, we're gonna have some background on first model adaptation. And we're gonna talk about how this person representation learning work in terms of adapter, pump tuning, and neural programming. So uh, first, uh, I think most of you uh, are not coming from a theoretical background. So one of the classic work to have uh, approximation for neural network coming from Baron in 1903 in IEEE transaction of inference theory. 
So in this uh, popular uh, or uh, ground standing theory, so he proposed any continuous function can be uh, can be approximated by a new network. Saying we have a, a function of u, and we have activation function of s, and the weight function w and the excess input. Yeah, there's a typo here. Sorry. So uh, one we can do for this approximation is we want to uh, have a small kind of uh, hypercube. And this hypercube just can approximate this continuous function. And this, this uh, pre-assumption inside this, uh, this function is like Lipschitz continuous. But that means like we can further draw a line about the representation power of our neural network model by uh, this continuous function on this Lipschitz continuity uh, property. Uh, in the better cases, uh, the mechanism behind parameter efficient learning, saying we have a preacher model and we're trying to fine tune it, and we have a data in stable pair of X and Y. So based on Baron theory and some recent work, we can define the loss function for regression like that. The same task arrow, but now is we calculating the expectation because we have a group of data. So then we have the approximation error on this model form, like uh, based we freeze most of the so is is the power of a version pre trained models because it can be a pre trained language model and pre trained inclusive model. Another part is like estimation error, so you can think of as when we freeze most of the only modify some space in the input and output, how we can uh, modify its estimation based on the approximation and the expectation that already got. So the approximation error corresponds to the representation power, is how, how good is the neural network. And the estimation error refers to generalization power, is like how the model can be generalized, which is related to our. Uh, adaptation and course model fine tuning here today. So if you are interested in relay work, there's some um, uh, paper reference and we'll provide this connection in our later slide and on that. So have a better intuitive. So now we know the prediction model can be bounded by a certain task error based on theory in 1993. Uh, I this error have two terms. Right, one is the representation power, one is the estimation power, and the prediction power is mostly freeze. But uh, why is the motivation behind uh, pumping and reprogramming? So I'm gonna introduce this work later, but right now you can think of they're uh, coming from the same perspective. So we think about a uh, scenario like that. So saying we have a prediction model only with a few uh, pro uh, sample, then we're trying to uh, So if we do we didn't do any kind of fine tuning, maybe we can have a pre training. So there's But why? When the model is only very far and really short, we can always make this uh, prediction error. Another thing is like because we overtune on this only eight tempo, so uh, the model can be just uh, overtuned and have bad performance. Like even uh, because this uh, because most of the decision boundary based on the statistical hypothesis have been changed. So that means it's hard to find a large return model. Is still due to the the minutes or in terms of uh, making a frozen adaptation model, or, or we trying to refunction a prediction model for other purpose, the one that we need for we need to boundaries. 
But if we directly apply this uh, preacher model on other domain, they will issue on mismatching domain or label level issues. Saying I have a preacher model with four level, but our target domain is uh, 10 levels or two levels. Mostly you have to add another process either on the bin set or the other uh, technique we usually do in the transfer learning. But from the other perspective, once we got this good decision boundary, which is really a smooth and robust, and we make our target data, saying I have two class of target data, uh, become trans, uh, become uh, on this like uh, on on this input space become trainable to make it align as a source domain data uh, to better allocate in this decision boundary. Why are we making that? Because when we're making this kind of uh, uh, trainable adaptation in the input space, when you, when how Casting arrow from the bridge model. So this this idea actually coming out in my uh, SML 2021 paper, and we have a theory based on optimal transport to justify this approximation, and we achieve uh, 19 of the set out result on the time series classification uh, for ECG or EEG classification using a pre-trained uh, English speech uh, preacher model, which is kind of surprising at that time. So what we actually do uh, to refunction a speech model for time series uh, processing in a classification task. So we do a process like that. Say we have a target domain, that can be ECG. And then we have a layer. This layer, we can think of a layer just do the pumping or adding some changeable information. So we, we fake any kind of time series layer, which is, uh, is usually longer than our sampling rate for speech processing uh, as a fake speech uh, sample. And we put it to a Christian acoustic model. The model will yell some prediction because it's a spoken comment classifier model. So it'll give yes, no, up and down, it's kind of uh, label. So we do another process called the label mapping. And then finally, we can just enjoy good classification error and enjoy the new set of ER, which could not be exported. So in this kind of point of view, uh, this reprogramming there at that time, uh, because pumping at the turn is not popular. So it's similar to the pumping we recently do when we talk with ChatGPT. We give uh, additional token to the model where we expanding a prefix on the input space. Uh, how this work actually uh, can be interpreted or listened uh, from the speech perspective. So we have another work in uh, actually officially in releasing archive in 2021, but this year it's gonna present in Inter Speech 2023. So the idea is like, can we refresh and uh, preach an English model again for some resource, low, low resource speech commands? So saying I have a speech command from Lithuania, if you're like that, no. so it's like no in Lithuanian. And then we have a trainable layer. This layer just basically giving noise on the input. So we have a reprogramming layer, reprogram the signal, which for the pre-trained speech model is a kind of English. It's not like that. No. So we can see there's some noise behind. So you can further control where you want to put this noise, by or you can directly uh, optimize this noise uh, for your original low resource domain. So how do you actually work again? So the model will, this will predict their source uh, label prediction like 9 and 0, and you, you use the label mapping process to process the, the label prediction, uh, this probability to your to your low resource domain like the venue. So we can find out this technique is similar to the adversarial attack, but that means a adversarial attack using a similar idea once we have a preacher model, 
and then our signal used to be degraded model performance. But meanwhile, since the model is over generalized, you can use it for your uh, for the other purpose as well. We're gonna talk on this uh, relationship later. So same thing can be worked on uh, on the Mandarin on the this clinical uh, processing. For example, uh, if you speak Mandarin, can hear these things like e. So now it's become kind of English for the model. Same thing for Lithuania. And even without the background noise, you can still doing this kind of reprogramming. And uh, in the paper uh, uh, my lab may gonna present is we further want to do some label mapping. Uh, we have this kind of uh, reprogramming. Then we have a target level uh, and we, we have a, a source level. Our target level is uh, NE in Lithuanian, and our source level have learn, no, and I. So in the latent domain, you can actually calculate this cosine similarity and based on the similarity from that. Because in our original work, we even find that random map mapping can work. Also, we are now using random mapping for the best uh, best case, uh, best, best, uh, most of the use case. But furthermore, uh, how to design input space mapping is something we can further look at. So how are you gonna present this work in their speech and part of the best student paper candidate? And at the same period, there's another uh, uh, direction of work like called the uh, speech pumping from National Tongwa University. The idea instead of directly doing this uh, chainable input injection uh, in the wavefront domain, we can actually do it in the token domain. So saying I have a speech signal, we go over with the self-supervised model to get some token uh, from Huber or way to vector two. And we can feed these two tokens to a pre-general, uh, they call it general spoken, generated spoken language model. And then uh, you can do this mapping again for the better use case. So most of the say they want to And one year after uh, my work. So I was thinking it's the same period of work. So how to give this kind of an analysis? Because today the time is limited. So you can think of following the same thing, idea we introduced at the beginning. We're doing the same thing on the latent domain. That means uh, 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 doing this space device or space device. So based on this bond, uh, it's actually we use uh, uh, to do this measurement, and they have some property uh, in the optical transport because the the richest one have a, uh, this this uh, is, is have a finite bound for this approximation. So in short, this theoretical result suggests uh, when we do the reprogramming of pumping, when the model can perform better, when a source model have a lower risk, this much direct you can think of it when you have a better pressure model or you have a better design or representation loss. But one good thing about this, uh, this theory is it can actually make, do some measurement when we do this pumping and reprogramming uh, based on our uh, previous uh, distant metric based, based uh, mechanism. For example, L2 or Washington Eastern or MND. All right. So uh, after this motivation and theoretical uh, connection to the previous one, so let's go over some architecture design. So saying I have a really big camera here, here, I want to make cast. So how can I do? One thing I could do is to And another thing, the big hamburger got fixed. You can ask on Shahur or Panda 
So it's like uh, French courses. Sorry for the French audience. Just make it much more tasty, but with a little bit modification. Because when you taste it, the first thing you can uh, on your toes, on your tongue is this uh, chocolate. So in terms of architectural design, I'm saying to you. So you can see how. So in the most of cases, we're gonna now turn this 96 layer. Instead, we're gonna freeze them and then follow the idea about alignment. We design something better. Is either your chicken fillet or your shafar upon of your hamburger. So basically, I separate two. Programming the pocket based technique. And the second thing I'm gonna go over is latent space like uh, uh, adaptation technique. So one recent advantage is convolution adapter. The other is low rank adaptation. So I'm gonna talk about both technique in this section. All right, again the hamburger things. And with our sexy 96 layer of a uh, uh, transformer, and then I suppose there should be a bigger and it's fixed for both of us. So when we have a lot of turns, you know, it's a ripped area. Every every day there's no turns uh, about doing this force amount of adaptation. How if we zoom a little bit, how we can uh, redefine this term from we think about we want to make this hamburger better or just make your transformer uh, with a better adaptation. The most easy way indeed is adding chainable input tokens. So it's something we have already really motivated these things in the reprogram pumping technique. The other thing is it can ask for Some people have been done in perfect tuning and the pumping. And also, in some technique adapter, they also doing these things. I would say they have some overlap. For the star, I would say uh, this technique is usually mainly using certain methods. And also, like, we can add. That means, like, we adding something uh, after or before this referral network. That means after we adding uh, additional channel related latent variable on this free four network, in their next uh, mass multi-head attention, they will just uh, pick out this latent variable for this shifting phase prediction. Finally, another thing uh, happening reprogramming for our coded verbalizer in pump tuning is like we can design this out of space mapping and how to make this process become vulnerable. So no matter you uh, uh so uh when I started this work uh on the reprogramming I used it as a side project. But after that we we know that there's more pumping work. So a lot of time people are asking me about and the any difference between pumping and reprogramming. So in terms of the their semantic meaning, reprogramming aim to have a meaning of changing the behavior of the exceeding software system or agents learning. The first work on reprogramming actually uh, co-authored by Goodfellow in, in 2018. Uh, so we can think about this technique usually using uh, general machine learning, computer security, and there's also a term called uh, single cell reprogramming, how to modify the cell behavior. So pumping as another semantic meaning usually refers to a way to illustrate behavior. For example, I, if I pump my, uh, pump my toilet, so usually it's a way uh, we can focus on information injection for fixing. So this math is actually uh, happening around the same time when the first paper of reprogramming happened in 2018. The first series of uh, pumping also happened between 2018 and 2019. But now it's usually mainly work in NLP literature because it's much easy to understand as a behavior. But also there is uh, one popular message they call it uh, what level of adversary reprogramming. So they actually have these similar, uh, similar things on this trainable token space design. 
So which is also one popular uh, pumping baseline there. So I would say, you know, in both community, we have this overlap. So in speech uh, processing, uh, to the best of my knowledge, of course, reprogramming will happen one year earlier than pumping work. But honestly, from my perspective, it's still sim similar period. So when I write new paper, usually I just cite both of them. So you can see the first work of uh, my work happening in ICML 2021 as a side project, and the speech prong and the web prong actually happening in InterSpeech 2022. And interestingly, I have talked with Hong Yi around uh, the spring of 2022 about a similar idea. And the web prong actually uh, proposed by UIUC. So we have a talk in ICML 2021. Uh, we just uh, so they have another TTS work. We, we are just then next to buying our process, our process action. So, so that when we zoom out a little bit, zoom out a little bit again, when we want to know about the recent work of uh, speech and cursing modeling uh, in terms of input information injection, as a tutorial perspective, we should more, make it more comprehensive. So the, for the work using reprogramming, the first line is in SML 21. And similar one, one thing is to have, make it with a general uh, uh, general spoken language model, uh, generative spoken language model for a speech pump, and also the web pump to make some technique on the web domain. So uh, meanwhile, in the general machine learning community, they are working. Programming wise to make your picture model become, can make fair, fair prediction, and the other is for label uh, space design. And more recently, uh, Ping you have another work using a large language model for antibody sequencing failing to achieve new state of the art. So uh, since today, he's gonna have a uh, invite a presentation in EJKai and to receive his EJKai award. So he will attend this tutorial uh, online. But I would say in his part of the tutorial, he's gonna talk about how to reuse large language model for other use cases. But we can think about uh, reprogramming having also used a lot in the general machine learning community. But meanwhile, in the MLP stream, I would say pumping is uh, something more buzzy and more popular. Uh, if you want to know more about his MLP related work, uh, you can refer to Mr. Chen Han Zhang's tutorial in AACL and also ICAS 2023. So following uh, this year, we actually have Interspeech 2023 by UT Austin and CMU. And there's other two uh, pieces of work is Speech Pump with version two and Speech Gen just released, uh, I think a few months ago. And also for reprogramming, we continue to work on that. So we have this multi lingual spoken camera this year, and also how to make a speech creature uh, model for music classification in ICAS. And also with Google, uh, we have a uh, uh, conform ASR programming, but actually this term is becoming compliant with adapter again. In interspeech, we have another uh, two piece of work. One is to make a generate a general uh, speech model for uh, adding new specific text for Arabic dialogue prediction. In other words, for TTS as an adaptation by adding additional laws to uh, virtual model. So I would say uh, this work, reprogramming and the pumping, they actually uh, following the same, same idea. So when we do this uh, information injection in the input space, we should add, uh, definitely treat it in the equivalent. Although the, the, on, the, on the specific data technique, they, are, they could be way different. All right. So yeah, I'm pretty much on time. So the take home message one. So who should work on this problem here? So if you have been working on a diverse oral robotics, and so my friend Oliver here. Yeah, so yeah, so <laughs> good to see you. So if you're familiar with uh, the virtual robotness, uh, the city is quite similar, right? So we have a similar frozen deployment model. We have a trainable perturbation for a speaker vector. We view our something more senior, you know, I vector, X vector, we have a similar uh, speaker vector, right? And then for speaker adaptation, most of it, our SR is a bridge model. So the problem is it becomes uh, the same again. And also another thing called the contextual biasing for ASR modeling. So we can actually bring these things out back to the parameter efficient learning because the problem sitting is a little bit actually the same. 
And if you work on patient to patient or uh, some margin based uh, approximation technique, the, the, the birth order homogenous, they can actually incorporate to the in context, or, uh, in, can be uh, bring it out into the parameter vision. And in terms of patient to patient, so this serial connection on this further model that can, can be have more, I would say, systematic analysis because right now people just pump at a dash, at your chicken fillet, at your shop without any kind of mechanism. So I believe there is more room and space to learn better when we have more domain specific technique. Finally, for today, is like if you, you have been working on multi loss or multi model trade. One thing why large language model can be such power, such powerful is they have more tokenized data than us, right? They have all the web data. So bringing representation power from one model to other model is something we can do with strong intervention learning. Because based on this theory, this representation power are things. That means you have really good prediction of this uh, original representation power. And the, pro the problem is how we design this uh, alignment from one model to the others. All right, so after this take home message, I will talk about a new idea called the modular deep learning. So uh, in modular deep learning, after we So we can actually make all the trending become more modular, saying I have a pre transformer, what we can do is we have a parameter composition or the input composition like we just do on this pumping, or we can have functional composition like uh, lower our those kind of current decomposition on specific cancer, or we use a hyper network. This uh, network to, to train to generate this hyper parameter weight of the network for your model. So this idea of modular deep learning has been proposed by Google this year, that means uh, in future, based on Beckman model, all the parameters can be injected and produced by those four kind of categories. Another more recent work is actually by uh, my former manager in Google, Paul Lee and Tara Scoop. They borrowed the idea of a modular deep learning for conformal space streaming ASR. So the idea is like we can have domain specific modular uh, primary efficient uh, architecture. So you have one domain. And for each domain, we have a specific parameter a module. So we can have a per domain adapter for domain uh, pumping or for the co-domain uh, mixed pumping and plus adapter. They call it mo modular domain and take masses. I just noticed they can also be presented in their speech this year. So uh, in terms of performance, they also um, or have more beneficial way compared to standard uh, transfer learning and fine tuning or modular uh, way on this modular deep learning. All right, so I'm gonna talk something on the uh, neuron residual adapter. So first of all, I give an overview of adapter. So adapter, uh, as we go over of that, is a modern format of, uh, of adding uh, add vector or speak vector in the latent space. If you are coming from speech, speech speech community, you can think in that way. So the first work actually from CPR. So the idea is you adding additional functional uh, convolution network for fine tuning. And and two years after, uh, Google has applied for uh, BERT fine tuning, and they give a new name called residual adapter. But there's two major differences. The first difference is like let introduce an up and down projection as the sub module of this adapter. We're gonna look at on this later. And, and furtherly introduce a specific activation function of GLU, which has been proved really be quite critical when we design these adapters. And I would say there is some fairly early for in speech content community should be also uh, be appreciated like X factor, I factor based technique, and also likelihood based uh, adaptation technique. All right, so uh, for convolution adapter for vision, so first have have introduced the concept of tunable deep neural network module, uh, saying we have a, a convolution module, uh, uh, saying we have a, a vision backbone like here. One thing we can add is directly add a back, 
uh, fashion or uh, in parallel with our original weight. So late in 2017, so they first to propose to parameterize the residual uh, residual network module with these convolution layers. So uh, one of uh, the student I co mentor in NTU, so she helped actually help me to uh, help me to make this adapter slide. Do you want to go over? So so uh, based on this uh, this motivation around convolution adapter. In following, we'll introduce two words from NTU and how they get inspired from both CV and NLP. The first one is from Neil Hosby, like we talked about. So they adding this, uh, I would say, autoencoder-like architecture upon this uh, transformer architecture. Again, we have our multi-head tension, we have our feedflow layer, we have this adapter, right? So here, this adapter is a chicken fillet we mentioned. So we have our feedforward down projection uh, down to linear space. So this linear space actually half of this dimension of your feedforward layer. So usually it's around uh, 368 or uh, 160, uh, 128. And then they have the feedforward out projection again, and then back to its original dimension. So one thing here is critical is they have this nonlinearity based on the activation function and then back to this original information. Then that means before your layer norm, you can add some information to your before four layers again, and then you can fit it back to your attention in your next uh, transformer block. So these masses actually uh, have a really good performance uh, compared to full model fine tuning and for low, low resource uh, uh, fine tuning uh, baselines is some, uh, mostly outperforming. So another paper actually by uh, Virginia Chen here. So she proposed a co-proposed a token dependent representation sheet for natural language processing. The idea is to add an adapter in a bias level. So uh, they have a token from the positive sen uh, sentence before the shifting and after this alignment. We directly do this like trainable. Uh, variable, like we adding this chicken fillet in their bias uh, level, they actually perform much well we having uh, this uh, sentiment-based classification. So for speech processing, the first work is actually by Anker uh, uh, from Google. So he published a paper for a speech-to-speech -speech translation with Rishiro Adapter in a workshop. And following one year after, uh, there's a word from uh, directly adding adapter for ASR for uh, apical speech adaptation. The yeah, idea is like that. Is once we have a, a R&D architecture, once we can directly apply this adapter as long as encoder, because in the encoder, we directly encode this acoustic feature. So then we just adding a uh, receiver adapter here. So in their uh, finding, actually two years ago, by adding the receiver adapters, uh, they can actually help the model, R&T model, perform better on this uh, domain adaptation. And following, I know some work from uh, Professor Helen Mong also used adapters, and also RB from UCLA also used adapter for this uh, children's speech adaptation. So uh, another work is actually from NTU. They also find out by having a over the comparison for uh, is superb is one of their uh, universal uh, speech processing benchmark. One of the best adapter they call it convolution adapter. They call it chapter. So they find out if we can have a uh, CNN adapters in their CNN feature structure in parallel with the convolution block, they can perform better even than the residual adapter. So one uh, mechanism behind is for speech processing, when we have this convolution uh, block, usually we have this window. So the uh, for the spatial information processing. So when we directly do the up and down projection, this information will be missing out. But if we have a CNN-like convolution adapter that can help us to make better on the uh, pre-trained SSL uh, speech test for different downstream location. For detail, we can refer to papers. Right, so uh, back to the reprogramming-based uh, work. One thing I find out quite interesting is last year in CVPR, they actually uh,
That means you will still modify your competition graph because your activation around these uh, layers have been, has been changed. By layer, if on graph. So in this CPR work, they can find out by using this combining reprogramming of input layer and adapter based side network, they can perform that and have a better inference time, which connect to the lower organotop in the second half. Uh, one thing following the same idea to improve uh, this inference uh, time and to save the memory uh, is actually from light acid tuning in Europe's last year. So the argument is saving the GPU training for inference you still can all both of you can do it. But once if we only want to once somebody help me in the computer, but I want to only want to use the same for trigger flare for my uh, for my domain. What we can do is we freeze that again. So is a So another question is that how we do this lot of side tuning? What they find out is fine. Uh, so you I think how an audience from industry this message could be the really more realistic for the round device processing. So following this string of work, we actually do the same thing at that time last year when I was in Google. So we proposed a message called the uh, uh, conformer reprogramming. We borrowed the same idea again, uh, uh, light outside, skip uh, tuning, and also the reprogramming. Basically, we combine everything together for a conformer uh, adaptation. And one thing we find out is like, first, for the multilingual adaptation, if you mix different language, the language cover more token now have a better performance. For example, English plus French, they have more unique token. That means when we adapt to some unseen language like Netherlands, Polish, or German, they can have better result in the uh, multilingual liberal speech. And meanwhile, we, can find, we also find out this parameter efficient learning work for a self-supervised model. And we build upon the set of the model called the joint supervised and not supervised uh, training, which is actually based on the weak to back experts, which is the liberal speech state of the art. We can find out by adding this reprogram uh, mechanism or a mix of adapter on <laughs> here mechanism on your pre trained model, you can actually use this length 10% of the parameter to have a similar result uh, compared to full model fine-tuning. And these things will still need a decoder fine-tuning, but it's way better than you, you only fine-tune decoder. But the result has been reported in my 
the Taylor and I cast in the in the previous section. And so far, I cast just made a video recording. So if you are from school or wanting to talk about this Taylor again, feel free to talk with me offline. But uh, I will not cover a lot of this part in, in today's Taylor. Cool. So so far, I think we go over most of the parameter vision learning. We know the history about pumping, reprogramming, and how in speech, how this thing begin, and how this thing can be combined together, just um, no matter name you are using. But another uh, interesting is like how to estimate a pressure models too. For example, when we have a big hamburger again, so far I want to know there. One thing uh, is I already done in Google and uh, Mr. Chen in unit, National Taiwan University have us to finish. They coded how to estimate a pre-trained speech model for model transformability. So the problem is like, like that. So I, saying I have a target speech data and I have a bunch of pre-trained speech model and directly decoding this speech data, we have got some little shot encoding features. So by having these features, we want to know uh, by using a score assessment, which which one is the best model to, to tune for this target data, which is the best layer to tune for this target data. And we find out we can use two mechanisms. The first mechanism is the optimal transport by this Cy Watson scientist and I proposed two years ago. Another method is this, uh, the same year in SML, there's another paper uh, using a more accurate method with the evidence maximization. So you can think about uh, when we have to do this uh, pressure model transformability estimation, we can think about for each one. By adding that layer for tuning, we can think about we are adding this additional weight for tuning. That means for label one and label two, we adding a decision boundary upon that. So then we can just do the evidence maximization to see which model, which kind of feature, which is the F here, to can easier to have these weights for for uh for separate these two kind of class. So uh actually one thing right now is 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 people are not quite understanding is like if I have a conformal layer saying it's like 18 layers, <laughs> which layer is the better layer I want to do. So last year actually with Google's in instance I uh, doing the layer by layer tuning. And we find out, okay, the layer 17 is the best uh, to our intuition, yeah, similar to our intuition, right? So that's layer. But some layer is still good, for example, layer 11. But you don't have to do the same thing I've done with 100 TPUs. You can just directly have a score estimation, and then you can have the estimation on the best layer uh, by either log me on this likelihood estimation based technique. Or the Watson and distance technique uh, with a really high curl, uh, correlation. So, so the correlation is over 0.8 with a really low p value. It's like, uh, so it's uh, quite robust. So, uh, by having this different kind of uh, intuition like pumping, adaptation, and estimation, like uh, my advisor, Professor Ching Li, uh, we're gonna have an ASRU satellite event this year. We call for paper for a uh, one, two, three page off-trade to a uh, partial full paper and we will have a double submission. So because this year, we have now is the CEO of a, a Renaissance uh, technology on this patient adaptation for speech processing. So we especially call for this parameter vision learning in contest learning, I'm gonna talk about later in this adaptation. So we will have a more interactive session this year in ASRU and feel free to join in, in Taipei City. Cool. All right, so <laughs> yesterday, if you see me a little bit tired, actually we got a forced landing at a, out of nowhere on a direct flight to Ireland. So we stay here in these small islands for around 12, 12, 12 hours. I think literally I meet my advisor there. We are in the same flight. So uh, we are welcome you for this special session. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so so part 1A is finished. Where we're gonna talk about advanced uh, section for parameter efficient uh, methods. 
And since time is quite limited, so we can make it in the, the questions after the part two, and we can also have the question in the general QA. Cool. So second down, I think for around uh, half of you, 40% of you, you, you do some problem interfacial work before. Hope my review like really make you learn something new. But now I'm gonna talk about something really new for just happened in recent half years. The first thing is the bias only tuning. This happened last year. That means if we only tune the bias, only to the part of the pack codes of your hamburger to make your hamburger taste better. So they find out by directly tuning bias, sometimes they can perform a fine tuning for specific low resource data, which happened in the ACR 2022. So then, and also find out in terms of bias, the bias of the Q and the G, of the bias after GLU is more important. Another thing I'm gonna talk more about is the best topic is about lowering in the patient. Uh, have you ever about Laura either in the veins or in the neck? Yeah, a lot of you, yeah. So Laura is a technique actually proposed three years ago in IPR 2021. So their idea is quite simple is what about we have a gap. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Original is a trivial idea because uh, there's these uh this information we can learn, right? because this thing is entirely linear. But one thing that we find out is when the model becomes extremely big, their representation power is already so good. That means we either didn't have the memory to tune the model, or by using LoRa, it can perform better. So I'm gonna, in this session, I'm gonna talk about this uh, with some more focus. So how specifically we can do this LoRa approximation? So we can first initialize our with uh, this B from zero to A from uh, Gaussian distribution. And we made this thing trainable with like the linear uh, chicken full leg, maybe a artificial one, uh, much easier for tune. But for Laura, one thing they find out, okay, so we have parameter language model from 100 million to 1 billion. For from 1 billion one, they actually find out that from us Laura, of is much obvious. That's the initial point of view of Laura. That means the trainable parameter is extremely low compared to the residual adapter, which is this one right here. It's not as low as the, the uh, bias only tuning, is the we only tune the bias, but it's still just a few, right? Less than 0.2% of the parameter. So, but there's some limitation of Laura. I'm gonna talk about specifically in this section. The first one is like, can the rank searching process become automatic? Because for a low rank decompensation, the low rank, we have to fix a rank when we train the model. That means I have to fine tune the model uh, the evaluation for each time. So which rank to use, which target module layer to insert or all that type of them. So one technique actually just presented uh, last month, so the adaptive LoRa. They have this adaptive the rank uh, uh, selection. That means for each time we just uh, dynamics to the rank location. That means for each low, each uh, component we can have different pieces of rank based on training objective. And then by using this dynamic rank location, you can have more customized LoRa design for a large module. Can be echoed to the modular deep learning thing we're talking about. Another thing just happened, I think, last month. They called it Lurie LoRa. Because one thing for LoRa is we can you only use it for uh, adaptation. But a lot of you working on self-supervised model, we also want to just use it for pre-training. Then we found like like you said, the point they find out by cutting your LoRa around 5,000 training state, they can perform better than 
just like the Fourier model, like the like the blue line here is the full rank uh, full fine tuning, and this one's with the LoRa switching. That means LoRa may not be as good as well at the early stage, but it can be used combined with full fine tuning as a dynamic fraction. So they find out uh, LoRa plus LoRa with the worst star or something, whether they try. I would say when the model become bigger than uh, 1 billion or 100 billion, to have some specific design back to our own mass of a, of a low range decomposition that can be very good. All right, so in the last part, I will talk about in context learning basic. Uh, have you, you ever heard about in context learning? Please raise your hand. All right, a lot of you have heard about this by thinking or any kind of process. So in context learning is like the model will learn uh, something by you have the conversation with you, the model. For example, if I have a talk with ChatGPT, uh, how can you perform in context learning? So they can actually make the prediction based on previous sequence to make a prediction from your example. For example, I have a few kind of uh, sentence example at the beginning and then can make the prediction afterward. So why context learning can work is something not showing up in this linking post or the Twitter post, right? So one thing talk about context learning can work can come in from two perspectives. The first pet perhaps is the Bayesian view we're gonna talk about in the next slide, but a more intuitive way is for uh, do for not gradients. Even the model has been deployed, your context window will still depend on previous center for prediction. And actually, uh, Jorgen, which is a scientist I really respect, they proved this turn of this uh, well known of the forward uh, propagation by well, equivalent to the backward propagation uh, in Transformer. And after this paper, uh, Microsoft, they uh, use a better title, uh, cite this paper saying, why can GPT learn in context? Language model uh, perform gradient descent through meta optimizer, which just shows the same view of this gradient form. That means when we do the forward computation, that would be equivalent to the, to the backward computation, which uh, in a other universe, they do it for these uh, GPT models. So due to con time constraint, I gave an overview here, but in terms of theory, you can track him back to the universal approximation again. Another thing is from the Bayesian inference. So saying uh, when we do the in-context learning, we actually have a goal what to learn, right? For example, if I want the model or GPT model to do center classification, here is a concept when we inject this pump. So for each pump, you are conditioned on the confounder uh, latent variable. So you can do the Bayesian approximation again, uh, not just on your pump, and it's, you can do the integral on your concept. It, actually, this work has been covered. Uh, how can we form recontest learning for Bayesian inference? So due to the time constraint, I'm happy to talk about this paper during the break section. Uh, Another thing for, for the power bind context learning called chain of thoughts. So this work actually uh, also pretty new, it's just in 2022. But why this thing become a main is when the model scale up, up to over hundred billion, when we give this example or some metric work, the zero shocks with this pump can outperform in few shock and fine tune. So here's the result of stand pump, standard pumping when you pump with, with a lot of example. By having this demonstration, they call it train of thought. They can perform better when the language model becomes better and the performance way better. In certain kind of cases, when they compare to prior supervised masses and human uh, performance in the large model over 100 billion, by giving this income tax example, by saying this question and answer pair, they help you to reformulate uh, formulate your context window a lot, and then they make you have a better income tax ability. 
Right. So, and I was thinking like I class 2024, I've been asked to host a special session for contest learning with Charles Zhang from uh, Tsinghua and Cambridge and Marco. So if you got interest or you have some experimental work for in contest learning, but it's hard it's hardly being appreciated by reviewer. Please contact me and the and the group. Uh, we have some white paper already, and but we are happy to host more paper. Another thing, uh, maybe not in my section, but I really want to talk about is besides the or the information injection based methods, there's the method called the multi model way merging. That means you can directly merge two similar architecture like Hubert and Bird together, GPT and VIT together to have better result. Due to the time limit, I couldn't show in the detail about this work, but I believe when the model becomes more and more as a library, how to recycle this model for multi model way merging can be something more and well related to the post model learning in this section. All right, so let's have some conclusion. So I will say, understand the history, like a person like 60, 60 years old, like my university or his 70s, <laughs> help you better design parameter efficient module and then indeed helps. And multi loss and accelerate objective could be a promising direction for both adapter, pump, and model reprogramming. And finally, in context learning, serves a parameter efficient a method and style as a new test adaptation framework. That means they can uh, pass way to the general artificial intelligence. So there is some relay word in this talk and will be in Interspeech 2023. And one thing is we make using adapter to tuning a non-private model to, to become private under differential privacy. Another is the Arabic speech uh, adaptation. Another one is for TTS. And finally, there's a one for model transformability estimation. So I want to give my acknowledgement with my colleague Amazon, with the I can give you the tutorial, and my uh, advisor in Georgia Tech, uh, Professor Jin Hui Li, and industry, my uh, long-term collaborator, like Dr. Ping Chen, and my manager, uh, Bo Li and Zhang, and Tara in Google, and a lot of academic friends. So I'm actually quite open in this collaboration. If you are 50 for collaboration, feel free to contact me during the break section. So usually I encourage a lot on my early uh, career collaboration collaborators. Uh, some that are here, like Shiji. So he's looking for a master and PhD degree next year. And Ziqing here. She's also looking for a master and PhD degree, uh, for a PhD degree next year. So if you're anxious or have some opening, you can contact them directly. Uh, again, there's a lot more reference. And I think that will be the spotlight feature talk. But I can allow like two questions if you have any. Uh, feel free. Thanks a lot. Uh, any questions? Uh, there's a mic. Yeah, so I think the question is like, does the adapter also have data or uh, like skilling law for data and for the model, right? They have two factors. So from my experience, if you have a data less than two thousands, you better use pumping or reprogramming from the input space directly. But if you have a space from two thousands to around hundred uh, ten ten thousand options or samples, you better to use adapters. But a bold desk side, you should use a uh, fine tuning with a customized side loss. So this is a brief idea about scaling now. Uh, I'm writing a review paper on that, but there's two things you may try. One thing is like depends on your data. 
if it has really small or shallow, try to use some pumping or reprogramming based technique to design just input in the in the output space. Right, because they can preserve the power value pressure model for most of the cases. Another thing is uh, if your uh, adapter is kind of overfit, just to make sure when you implement the adapter, the activation function is not really with the GLU. Uh, they find out this and make a lot of difference. And another thing is like uh, to have a double check about bottom back layers, uh, which the GLU may be cover later. <laughs> So that's something can be overfit also. We all have some covering or uh, collaboration. But basically you have some customized design whether in the new architecture and uh, multi training on the adapter could be necessary. But if you zoom out a little bit uh, to pick out the input only or the latent domain or fine tuning can be dependent on data skill. Hope this answers your question. Thank you. Uh, okay, I think we can have another question. Agree. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So actually, in the speech pump paper, they find out speech pump is not working for ASR, but the uh, author may not directly show in the paper. This so far I learned from him. Yeah. So, uh, I think uh, Oliver. So this is for the language to speech cases, right? Yeah. So one thing uh, that could be also underexplore is for speech. Per token, the information we got is much sparse than language. So some people are thinking about we should do some constraint on the token space. Uh, that's something we can also try also. That's uh, my intuition here. Yeah, yeah. So I think in the spotlight talk today by the Chen Yuan, Chun uh, Yahu. So he have a paper pumping language model for ASR directly. They actually do some window design uh, on Llama to make Llama to perform ASR directly. So I think he can cover more on this perspective. Yeah, thanks. Very good question. All right, so I will give this part for Shujit and we can go over some code example for around uh, like 10 minutes. So after that, we're gonna have our break. I will stay in this room and feel free to contact me if any questions. So Shijit is, uh, he's actually, he's a bachelor student. So we have worked together for about one year. So he's one of the more uh, dedicated person I've ever met. So he will give us this tutorial uh, spotlight talk on how to insert the uh, adapter. And his his work on this collab will also share with the, the other team. That means you can direct over the code by just uh, shift and enter. Yeah, please, Shijit. Uh, Yeah, good morning, everyone. So yeah, one of the advantages of adapters are that they're very easy to implement. So I'll just show how to implement adapters in one of the famous speech models. So we'll, do, we'll be doing it to a model called Whisper. Uh, it's a model released by OpenAI that's been trained on uh, around 680,000 hours of great body data. So it's a very good foundational open source speech model. So you can run this column with, with just your CPUs because we are just changing the architecture and not uh, training the model. So we just begin by cloning the official repo from the OpenAI team. And let's see how much trainable parameters are there by default. And then we'll implement our adapter layers. And then we'll see once you implement adapters, how the trainable parameters decrease. So I'm just uh, cloning the whisper repository and installing some necessary packages over here. And yeah. So once that's done, then we can load our whisper model. 
Now, I think the smallest variant, tiny, is around 70 million parameters, and uh, the largest variant is around 1.5 million parameters. Uh, obviously, when we use adapters, we use it for much bigger models. For example, like Lama, which, which has a 7 million parameter variant. But uh, in this notebook, we just use it with the base variant so that we can load it in a CPU instance. So I'm just waiting for this one particular site to finish. So yeah. So let's just load the base variant. Yeah, so there's 139 trainable parameters. Yeah, yeah. oh sorry, one second. Yeah, I hope that's fine right now. Yeah. So yeah, we have 71 million parameters over there. So I'll just give us a brief overview of adapters, the same picture that we had in the slides. So what happens here is this is just what you see inside a transform block. So you generally have multi head latency. You have feed forward layer, and then sometimes you have another feed forward layer. So what we do is we implement adapter blocks after the feed forward layer, and what happens inside this adapter block blocks is being directed here. So it's like an auto encoding mechanism. You just have a down projection. You apply a nonlinear, mostly like a gel application function, and then you have an up projection again. So you can visualize it like you're just inserting auto encoder, auto encoders inside the adapter transform block. So yeah, that, that's what I explained over here. So we'll just see as in code because when once you clone the GitHub repo in the notebook, it automatically works. But um, just to give you some idea of how to implement it and how, how it e easy it is, I have a small image over here. So to implement it, you only need three lines. It's like three lines in the init function so that we can uh, initialize our adapter blocks within the transformer box. So let's see here. What happens is we have your multi attention, we have MLP layers, and I'm just adding three lines of code over here. So what we do is we add a layer node and uh, this is the down projection. So something like one to eight zero dimensions to 120 dimensions. You use a linear layer to down project it. And we need a uh, accretion function. We are using the general accretion function. And we are projected again. So the smaller dimension, but bigger dimension. So this is the init function. And it's very similar to implemented in the um, forward method also. So over here, uh, you have the attention mechanism. Here you have the cross attention mechanism when you go for the decode of this. Here you have the ML. So afterwards, you just add these elements. What happens is um, you down project your latent dimensions here. You apply your activation functions over here. And then you up project your latent dimensions over here. And you just add a residual script connection. So it's that simple to implement. And once again, I'll just see if I run the code. So it's over here. So we had 71 million, 71 million parameters over here. So I'll just clone the repo with the adapter implementation. So yeah, and we'll get the same base variant of mode, base mode with 71 million parameters and we'll have the bottleneck dimension as uh, adapter dimension over here. And uh, like one, one of the person asked a question over here, you can also reduce the adapter dim uh, dimensions if you feel that your model is overfitting because that reduces the amount of tradable parameters also. So over here, like I said, we just added adapters with a code syllable with 64 dimensions and then we just count the number of trainable parameters. So yeah, if you, now you just have only 0.39 million trainable parameters. Now, obviously there's a question of what's the difference in performance. Um, in, in one of the pay, pay posters that I'll be presenting in industry, we had an adapter dimension of 256, the tiny model, and it performs within 0.8% full fine tuning. So even though the number of trainable parameters are less, you don't still sacrifice a lot in performance. So that, that's a very good advantage. And probably the only disadvantage of adapt adapters is that uh, when you go for large models and you use larger adapter blocks, it kind of adds to the inference time, but that's mostly negligible. So yeah, 
the autoencoder implementation you see here is the most common one. It's been there since 2019 and most people use it. Now, uh, even Dr. Huck, when he was explaining, he said that uh, sometimes when you make this adapter block, so one second, uh, adapter block similar to the model, your performance in improves. So some papers, what they do is instead of going for an autoencoder variant, um, they just make the adapter blocks look like a uh, transformer block. And how they do it is just by mimicking the self-attention model. So I'll just explain this particular diagram. So we'll just concentrate on the blue blocks and the blue lines for now. So this is what happens in a normal whisper model. Like you have the hidden, uh, hidden dimensions from the previous layer. Uh, you pass it through a query, query linear layer to get the query matrix. You pass it through the T linear layer. You pass it to the value layer, linear layer. And then you apply self-attention. And then you have your MNP layers and stuff like that. So one more way we could uh, implement adapters is just uh, you initialize a small trainable matrix. This is the only trainable mat matrix over here that, that I have called ML, or learnable matrix. And we reuse the key and value pairs, so the key and value linear layers over here. So only this is sustainable, but you pass it to the frozen key and value layers of the whisper model. And then you apply search potential. But the query comes from the whisper model, the frozen whisper model. So you are only generating the key and value pairs. And, and then that's all. It's, it's the same after block, the same concept you insert it between uh, each layer and you train it. And depending upon your architecture, it's still sometimes it gives you a better performance. And uh, one more added advantage is that uh, when you're going for uh, cross-modal implementation with adapters, uh, in one of my works, I replaced this learnable matrix with embeddings from an audio model where the original model was a language model. And it actually worked well. So uh, I was able to use embeddings from an audio model over here, and the rest of the part was in language model. And I improved the performance by going for this setup instead of using the auto input setup. So one more added advantage is that uh, it also works for cross-model stuff when you go for a transformer-based implementation. And yeah, imp implementing it is again easy. So uh, you only need one trainable parameter over here, it's that color block. So I just zoomed it up so that it's easier to understand. So in the, in the init function, we only add one small trainable matrix. I, I'm using the embedding layer for it. So in the forward, again, uh, th th this is the self attention, this is the cross attention, this is the MLP layer, which is by default in the model. And uh, for, for simplicity, I'm only adding it to the encoder layers. So if you want adapters and it's not the decoder block, we reshape it uh, so that you can, you can apply cross attention with it. And then I repeat it across the batches so that if your batches are four, you just replicate it four times. And, and then that one is, uh, the self attention is the same attention mechanism of the whisper. I'm just passing my newly initialized table matrix into it. And yeah, it's, it's as simple as that, and it works very well. So we just compare how much trainable parameters we had for the adaptive dimension. So it's 64 dimensions. So we can also go down to use the, the transformer block implementation. And the way you do it with the, the repos again simple. Instead of adapter equal to two, do this equal to false. You add, add transformer adapter two, and then the amount of trainable dimensions. And yeah, it's still, you have less number of parameters again. Uh, it's less than 0 0.2 model parameters. And yeah, that, that's pretty much it. It's very easy to implement. And it works very well also. It it mostly works within one or two percent of the fine tuning performance. And it saves a lot of time and training also. Um a, a personal metric is I used adapters with this recent Lama models from Meta. Uh, these models have seven million parameters. And I was able to use this variant of adapters with adapter dimension 10 and train a seven million parameter model on a V hundred GP. Uh, a V100 GPU has 32 GP of virtual RAM. So that's a benchmark on how well, I mean, how much compute you need to train a 7 million parameter model. 
So it works really well, yeah. <laughs> so that's that's the end of my small presentation. And that's all. Thank you so much. And feel free to contact us in this room, and we are having a break for around 20 minutes. See you then. Wait, let me start the recording. <laughs>